So hello and welcome to this episode of Adventure Bike Pilot. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the aerial footage there of the sites and locations that this route uh, will bring you to see. As you can see, it's uh, it's it's quite uh, an epic amount of scenery that you're going to see on this particular route. Uh, and it continues on what we've already seen in the uh, the Ring of Kerry and, and the southern section of it. Um, so before I, I go into the, the overall route itself and, and, and the details of it, I just want to go and do a quick recap of the Wild Atlantic Way itself. Um, as it's been a while since I did the first section of it, so I just want to recap on some of the highlights of it. Uh, as you can see from the picture here, uh, the Wild Atlantic Way uh, driving route basically goes from, from Northern Ireland right down to the, to the south. It starts in uh, Muff in County Donegal and its uh, official vending spot is in uh, Kinsale in County Cork. Obviously you can do it in either direction um, but uh, because I live in Ireland I generally don't do the whole thing in one go. I usually break it into two trips in a year so uh, in the early part of the year, around May, I'll do the bottom section, which is the Ring of Kerry and so on. Uh, uh, and I'll do that in, in one long weekend. And then later on in the year, I'll do the upper section from Galway up to here. So that's the way this, this route is, is going to be built. It's it's done as one single trip from Galway to Donegal to take in this section, as was the, the earlier route of the, the southern section. Um, so overall, the... Uh, the, the total distance of the Wild Atlantic Way itself is about just over 1,500 uh, miles. There's 150 what are called discovery points, uh, and those are, are points of interest with uh, usually beautiful viewing spots along the route, uh, and you'll, you'll easily identify them uh, on the route. They have these metal signs here with the WAW Wild Atlantic Way symbol on them. Uh, as you can see here is, is a picture of, of my bike at one of these points. Uh, and then there's also what are called 15 signature discovery points. These are points that are, are uh, uh, considered extremely beautiful or scenic points that aren't to be missed within the uh, the overall route. Uh, and this this journey here and this route here will obviously include all of the ones. I think there's eight of them in, in this section from Galway to Donegal, and this route will, will obviously uh, uh, include them. Overall, there's about a hundred, sorry, a thousand attractions to see uh, along the Wild Atlantic Way. If you're planning to stay uh, and do a trip here, if you're coming in from abroad, you know everything from castles to museums and to uh, uh, beautiful scenic areas and parks, etc. And there's well over two and a half thousand plus activities to be done. Everything from paragliding to horse riding to hill walking, mountaineering, uh, swimming, whatever you can think of, it's, it's all along the, the Wild Atlantic Way. It's, it's very well serviced um, by all of the uh, amenities. Uh, so we'll just go on to the next slide. So. so the official Wild Atlantic Way uh, website breaks the Wild Atlantic Way into six sections. And, and that's broken into the northern headlands, the surf coast, the bay coast, the Cliff Coast, Southern Peninsulas, and the Haven Coast. Uh, so I've already covered the bottom three here, the, the Cliff Coast, Southern Peninsulas, and Haven Coast in earlier videos, and they'll be part of this play, playlist. Uh, so by all means, go back and watch them if you haven't already done so. But this, this route and this next uh, set of videos is going to focus on the upper section, which is the Northern Headlands, the Surf Coast, and the Bay Coast, which basically runs from, from Galway through Mayo, up through Sligo, and on into Donegal. Um, and as I said, I'll usually break it into two trips, uh, doing this these three sections in one trip, and then these three in the, uh, the next trip, which is what we're about to go through. So this route, the focus of this route is going to be, as I mentioned, uh, the northern section that will go, go run from Galway, Mayo, Sligo and Donegal. Uh, and the reason I've added the little plus icon onto that is uh, because I've expanded on the Wild Atlantic Way route itself. Uh, obviously the Wild Atlantic Way is a beautiful route, uh, but if you stick rigidly to the, to the Wild Atlantic Way only route, you're going to bypass an awful lot of absolutely amazing scenery and things to see. Uh, and over the years, I've included and added on the things that are close by to the Wild Atlantic Way that while you're on the route, you may as well go and, and pull these in. 
and it just expands on the route a, a, a little bit further and takes advantage of, of the time that you're going to be down there. Um, so as I said, don't, don't be afraid to explore more sections of the area while you're using and, and driving on the Wild Atlantic Way. Uh, the one thing to note, like a lot of these counties, as I said, like particularly Donegal, there's a huge amount of other stuff to be seen within in these counties other than the Wild Atlantic Way. Donegal itself, for example, is a, is a deceptively large county. There's a huge amount of stuff to see on the interior uh, of, the, of the land, not just along the coast. So by all means, you know, use this as a template. But if you can, I always try and spend more time in each of these areas uh, and try and go and explore a bit more of, of the, uh, the county that I'm in. But by all means, uh, the Wild Atlantic Way certainly picks out the best of it. Uh, but definitely don't, don't skip over uh, the other things that are close by. So just a bit more detail on this route here itself. Um, as I said, it's, it's about a thousand miles uh, in, in this route. And I've spread that over somewhere between five to six days. Now, there are people that can do this an awful lot quicker. I know people that might do this in one or two or three days, uh, and that's fine. But I, for my style of driving, I like to take my time. I like to have a, a, a look around the areas that I'm going to be in and take photographs and go and explore a little bit. Uh, I generally try to keep it, when I'm on the back roads in, in these um, out-of-the-way areas, to about 200 miles a day. That would generally leave me to be able to get up and have breakfast at 9 in the morning, leave no later than 10 from the hotel, uh, and then get into my next destination around the 6, certainly no later than 7 o'clock in the evening. Now, on this trip, some of them are a little bit longer and some of them are a little bit shorter, um, but that's just the way I've, I've worked it out. I've driven this route several times over the, the last few years, and it's just the way it always works out for me uh, in terms of my destinations. So... For me, uh, I'll be starting over on the East Coast. A lot of people that might be coming in from outside of Ireland will generally come in from Dublin, so they'll be starting not too far from where I am. Obviously, I'll be putting all these maps up on my, my route planner uh, that, that I can share with you. You can download them and you can tweak them to your own circumstances and, and your own starting point. But for me, it starts basically in Kildare. Um, and it cuts right across. And the, the trip itself properly starts when I hit just past Galway City and it takes me onto the coast road out towards Spittle uh, and out into the uh, into the Connemara Mountains. Um, so overall from the east coast for me to, to Delphi Mountain Resort is where I normally stay which is in Mayo just over the border from Lanan in Galway. Uh, it's about 290 miles so but a lot of those miles are this motorway coming from here. So from where I live over to Galway itself takes somewhere between an hour and a half to two hours, depending on the, on the traffic and how you're driving. Uh, so two hours of that is basically just getting across over to Galway and then starting the trip proper starts from basically just Salt Hill, I suppose, onwards. Um, from from Lanan, then the next day, we'll go up to Killy Beggs, following the yellow route along here. And then... From Killy Beggs, we'll continue on along the route until we get right up into Letterkenny. And Letterkenny up here is basically, it's, it's, I suppose it's considered the capital of Donegal. It's the largest uh, city or town within Donegal. Uh, and it's a great launching point then to do the next couple of days here. So I'll, I'll generally spend two to three days in Letterkenny because then it allows me to do uh, this piece of it here and then this section here, finishing here before I head off home uh, for the day. Um, now, obviously, generally, I would do uh, you know a longer route home, taking in the Causeway Coastal route, etc. Or, or if I hadn't got time, I'd just go straight home. Uh, but I'm only focusing really here on just getting in and, and getting the uh, the Wild Atlantic Way itself done. Uh, I've broken out the miles. Obviously, the second day, uh, Delphi to Killybegs is, is the longest day. It's 335 miles. It is a long day, so. So be prepared for it. But the next uh, two or three days then are, are quite uh, quite reasonable. You know, they're quite short. And, you know, if you're the type of rider uh, who, who can put in more miles or wants to do it a bit quicker, you could probably combine uh, these two uh, journeys together and do them all in one day. Um, as I said, it will include all of the additional sections that I normally add into it. Uh, and it also includes all of the eight uh, signature discovery points, which I've listed here. As you can see, it goes from Malinhead, Fanhead, Sleeve League, 
Mullamore, Down Patrick, Keemstrand, Clary Harbour, uh, and Derrick Derrick Imola, I think it's called. Uh, so those are the eight points that are, are within these sections. So, so that's the overview and the recap of the, the total wild Atlantic route and uh, what we're about to get into here. Uh, so without further ado, I, I'll get into the actual route planning itself where we'll, we'll take a deeper dive into the route itself and each of the points that we'll stop at that are, are, are the, uh, the main points of interest. Um, but obviously feel free to change the route uh, to suit yourself. Uh, and I may break this video down into maybe two or three videos because uh, there's a huge amount to get through, particularly in Donegal. Uh, as I said, it's a massive county. Uh, the, the, the Donegal Sligo section, it's a, it's a tougher route to drive than the Ring of Kerry type of section. The Ring of Kerry, I've always said, flows an awful lot easier the way that the route is, is mapped. Uh, but... Uh, mile for mile, Donegal and Sligo and Galway and Mayo packs just as much of a punch as the Ring of Kerry, uh, albeit particularly the further north you get. It is a tougher drive. The roads are narrower and smaller. Uh, it just takes longer to get around. Some sections of it are, um, are an awful lot of twin track. Uh, you know, this may not be suitable to every bike. I mean, obviously any bike can do it, but it's it's just about, you know, it's more geared toward the adventure bikes and, and, and the riders who like to get down the the back dirt tracks, well not the dirt tracks, but the twin tracks and that type of stuff. There's no off-road really in this at all. Um, so like I said, any bike can do it, it's just more comfortable on an adventure bike. So anyway, we'll kick off and we'll get into the route itself uh, proper. So before I crack on into the route itself, I just want to say make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. I've got lots more routes, uh, both within Ireland uh, and outside of Ireland, that I'm going to be going through in detail uh, going forward. Obviously, the Wild Atlantic Way was a big one I wanted to get done. I've also already done one for the NC500 in Scotland. So it's not just Ireland um, I'm focusing on. It's anywhere. It's other places outside of Ireland. Uh, it's just that Ireland is obviously my home country, and so that's where I'll be focusing most of my efforts on. And there's plenty to do other than the Wild Atlantic Way, both on day trips, weekenders, or longer trips within within Ireland. Uh, so absolutely make sure you, you like and subscribe and stay tuned to make sure that those uh, you get to see those videos coming up. Uh, but anyway, I'll, I'll be using my route planner as I always do. Uh, I'm not affiliated with my route planner at all. It's just a package that I use. Um, and I, I'll be keeping these in a folder called the Wild Atlantic Way. And then within that folder, there's a subfolder called Galway to Donegal. Uh, and those will all be made public for, for anyone to, uh, to share, download, and, and edit to their own requirements. Um, there is a free version of this, and it'll allow you to do everything you need to do. Uh, I know the, the full version is getting quite expensive now. I got it in its early days when it was quite, uh, quite cheap. Um, but uh, the free version, as far as I'm aware, does everything you'll need to be able to do in terms of sharing the routes, editing them, and downloading them. Uh, it's particularly good for the TomTom -tom device, um, and, it's, and it's the one that I, I, I generally use. So you can feel free to send me a friend's request in my route planner, uh, and, I'll, and I'll add you in, and then that will give you access to all of these, uh, to these routes. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below. So with that, we'll, we'll go in and we'll have a look at each of the days. So as I said, I've spread this out over about you know five or six days. Uh, I've broken it out. Each route is one uh, full day's riding. So it's not sorted properly here, but it's basically D1 is day one, then day two, then day three, then day four, day five, and so on. Uh, it's telling you the mileage and the estimate times here. There are very much estimates. It's totally will vary on the day when it uploads to your device. Obviously, that will change, and then it will change depending on how long it is you take to do the route, how your driving style, how often you stop, uh, and so on. So take these with a pinch of salt. But the distance should be pretty accurate. Uh, so let's go in and we'll have a look at day number one first. So you can see here in day number one, you can see as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to come from basically Kildare and make my way across the motorway. To just past Galway City here and out onto the coast road. So for me, the, the trip proper really starts uh, from Salt Hill onwards. That's when you really start getting onto the, to start hitting the scenic stuff. So all of this is motorway. It takes anywhere between an hour and a half to two hours to get from, from over the east coast over to here, uh, depending on where you're starting from, etc. Uh, your traffic and 
your speed. Uh, so for me, it really starts when you get out here onto the coast road and out past Salt Hill. It brings you out through Spittle, and this is all really nice driving, but the really good stuff is, is, is out here. Now, the last, before you get here, point number four is the last turn, really, before you're really leaving, I suppose, civilization here. You're, you're going to go out into the back of the beyonds here, where fuel stations and, and these stops are going to be, uh, you know, fewer. Uh, so there is a cost cutter shop here. So if you're going to stop for snacks or anything, uh, this is the place to do it. Uh, just stop here before you continue on and uh, stock up on anything you need. Because generally I don't stop in cafes or restaurants or anything like that when I'm on the move. So it's good to be able to just pull in here, get what you need and then crack on for the, for the rest of the day. Obviously make sure you're fueled up. There's a couple of fuel stations along the uh, Salt Hill to Spittle and Spittle onto the Cost Cutter Road here. So make sure you're fueled up uh, when you get out here. Not that there's not fuel stations or anything, but uh, it's just so that you don't have to stop when you're out here into the, uh, to the really good stuff. So cracking on into the first stop, first one here is uh, point number five, and that's Coral Strand. Uh, as you can see, it kind of takes you off the main route. It's a dead end, so we'll come down here before coming back on. Uh, and all of these points are part of the Wild Atlantic Way uh, or, or the additions that I've added on. But they're points that are either really nice to drive or they're very, very photogenic. Great for taking photographs or, or putting up a drone or, or anything like that. So I'll just click on it so you can see down here, little car park down at the end. And as you can see, beautiful little strand. And, you know, Connemara is, is very well known for its its old rock walls and the, the, the amount of rock in the, in the countryside, etc., and its coastline. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, so that's point uh, number five. We'll come back up out of there and we'll head back up onto the main route. Uh, and then we'll follow on around. And this route here is just keeping us close to the main coastal road all the way out. Uh, we'll bypass this one. That's a nice road if you want to cut the journey a little bit short. Uh, but I'll stick to the longer one here and head out by point number six here. Point number six is, isn't anything of particular interest. It's just keeping me along the coastal road here. Point number seven, again, is also doing the same. It's bringing me out onto the Cashel Coast Road. Uh, there's two beautiful towns not far from each other, the Cashel and Roundstone. And the road between them and the villages themselves are, are very, very nice. You on out from there, and then we'll hit number eight, which is Roundstone. Beautiful little village uh, of Roundstone. There's a little harbour here. Again, I'll just click on it here so you can see. Um, so you can see all the, the 12 Bend mountain range, all the bends uh, out in the distance. Uh, beautiful little fishing village. Uh, I've always, it's one place I've always actually wanted to stay overnight. Uh, but this point will keep you out going through uh, Roundstone. And Cashel is very sim similar. Uh, that'll bring you out point number nine again it's keeping us close to the coast it's just a little um turn off here otherwise we would just cut straight across but if you keep on to this little turn off here uh, it keeps you on the coast again as i said you can see it's a little bit twin tracky um but it's a beautiful little coastal road that keeps you along uh, the water's edge uh, so that's why i've left it in so when we pull out of there, we'll continue on back up onto the main route and then we go down to point number 10, which is Dogs Bay Beach. Again, it's another little dead end, but it's a beautiful, beautiful little photograph or drone point. I'll we'll just click into it here. You can see again, twin track. And that's why I say the adventure bikes are better for here. You know, you sport bike riders uh, with the stiff suspension might not like it as much uh, down some of these roads. Uh, but uh, they're well worth getting down. So as you can see, it's just another beautiful point to go down and try and get some photographs on. So leaving Dogs Bay Beach, we'll come back out, rejoining the main route, and we'll continue on up here. Point number 11, just keeping us honest along the main uh, coastal road. These are all little dead ends, little tributary roads that come off. Um, as much as I'd like to go down every single one of them, obviously you can't do all of them. And then we'll continue on around until we get to uh, point number 12. And point number 12, a beautiful little pier called Dramin Pier. And again, it's one of these ones that's down kind of a dead end that, that loops out. So it's very easy to just pass it if you stay in the main route there. Uh, so this point will just take you down and keep you honest onto this uh, road. So I'll just point, 
get a bit better onto the actual point itself. So as you can see, it's beautiful, very, very picturesque area uh, down here, right onto the little harbour. It's like something out of uh, the Iron Islands and Game of Thrones, although this isn't where that was filmed. That's uh, up in Northern Ireland. Uh, but it's a beautiful little little harbour and when the sun is shining the, the water is just a, a, an absolutely stunning colour. So we'll make our way out of there up by point number 13 again. That's just um, another stop. This is called the Alcock and Brown Memorial Stone. Uh, now from what I understand Alcock and Brown is uh, two pilots. They were the first ones to, to complete a transatlantic uh, aeroplane crossing an old biplane, I think it was. Uh, but this is a memorial stone commemorating them from when they traveled. I think it was in from, I think it was Labrador uh, uh, over near Canada. And they flew right the way across the Atlantic and landed here. Uh, now, this isn't the actual landing spot. spot. This is a memorial to them. You can see it's like the tail of a plane. Um, for the actual landing spot, we'll go a little bit further up here. You can see we continue on up around the route. Now, just a little note here, you'll see the route, the black line here goes up this road to a dead end. Now, feel free to go up it, but the actual point we're trying to get to is point number 14. For some reason, the software is sending the route up this road instead of this road, but it's actually this road we're trying to get up. Uh, and point number 14, again, it's a real narrow twin track, so your sports bike riders won't like it. You can see it's primarily gravel, uh, but I believe... This white marker here marks the spot where the actual plane uh, crash landed on their, their, their voyage over, their, their flight over. Uh, so it's a very historical spot, but it's also a very scenic spot. And I think it's well worth getting up to try and get the, the photographs of it. Again, it's a dead end, so we'll make our way back down. As I said, feel free to go up that road, although I, I think it's, it's, it's even more... <laughs> tricky than the other road we just looked at as you can see it's very uh it's very twi twin tracky so if you get up it it just ends in this dead end i don't know if it's worth going up but there is a nice lake there uh, but it's just an error from the software for some reason uh, we'll continue on then out the road uh, onto the main route and we'll continue on up here and as you can see if i click anywhere here there's literally no bad roads here there's nowhere you can go that isn't just stunning it's an absolutely beautiful area and um, but I'll continue on up here. And then just here is the town of Clifton, a nice little town. It's a good spot for stopping for lunch. Um, but just as you leave Clifton, there's a little turn off. And it brings you out onto this loop road here. Uh, and this is called the Sky Road. And it's an absolutely stunning road, well worth doing. Uh, if I just click on it here. Again, it's a coastal road out along this little peninsula. And it brings you down now. It gets really narrow in some points. And then when you get right down to the end of it here, which I've put at point number 15, if I just click on it here, you can see it goes right down to a beautiful little beach. And that's what I mean. When the sun is shining, the color of the water around here is absolutely stunning. You know, it's really, really beautiful. Um, so well worth the effort to get down and, and riding the sky road itself is absolutely fantastic. The next one then is when you come up off the sky road, very shortly after that there's another left turn. Uh, now you could continue on and cut this whole peninsula off but I, I don't recommend it. You want to get up here, it's quite narrow and it brings you to point number 16. And point number 16 is the entry point to uh, Omi Island. Now. You don't have to go over to the island. There's not a whole lot on it. Uh, as you can see, the road is actually quite small. Uh, but you really go up here because the road over to Omi Island is, is quite interesting. It's basically uh, the, the seabed. Uh, as you can see here, there's the road signs in the seabed. When the tide comes in, the road is completely submerged. It's very similar to a place in France. I think it's called Saint-Michel, I think it's called. Um, but there's Omi Island. Sorry, that's the mainland there in the distance. And then if I turn it around, you can drive right over and there's Omi Island there in the distance. So you can drive right across. Now, I would say is that depending on what time after the tide has come in or out, you know, the sand can be quite loose. So uh, <laughs> the, the back end of your bike can slide out quite easily. But it's, it's great fun to drive it. It's, it's a beautiful place to go over. And as I said, 
you can go right over onto the island. It's very small. You can be on and off it in 10 minutes. But uh, it's just to get down for the experience of it. Uh, now, you can go back the way you came, or you can follow this road out. For some reason, the, the software or the Google car didn't go down any further here, but you can actually drive out this road here. Uh, but it's all the same. You'll come out onto the same main road and follow around. And point 17 and 18 are just keeping us honest along the coast road here. Uh, and I'll just give you an idea so you can see it's just keeping us along the coast. Beautiful little narrow boring roads. Uh, and it just keeps you always in the, uh, the scenery. That will then take us out. And we're going to move on up along here to point number 19. Now, 19 is Ardkyle Beach. Again, it's down another little dead end. It's very easy to drive past it and keep going. But it's, again, another beautiful little scenic photograph point. If I just zoom in. So you can see there, as I said, it's a dead end, but an absolutely stunning, stunning little cove. Really worth uh, the effort to go down. So we'll come up out of there, we'll leave our Kyle Beach, we'll join back onto the main uh, Wild Atlantic Way route, we'll continue on up through Letter Frack, and we'll make our way out onto this peninsula here, uh, up to point number 20, uh, and again this is just a waypoint to keep us honest on this uh, coastal road again, so as you can see it's keeping us so that we always see the mountains and the coast in the distance, there's a nice little castle up there as well. Uh, and then that will bring us all the way down here to another little point of interest called Gort, Gortina Lock, I think it's called. I'll just click on it there. So as you can see, it's a beautiful little, another little harbour. Tide is out of this, uh, this picture, but it's a beautiful spot to go down and take some photographs of. Leaving there, point number 22 is just keeping us along the road, along the route to bring us back onto the main route. We go through Tully Cross here. Uh, we'll make our way out along the coast still here until we get to another little dead end down on point number 23. Uh, and this is Glassalon Beach. Again, another one of these beautiful little coves. As you can see, the mountains are still in the distance. Beautiful beach looking out, absolutely spot on for photographs or aerial uh, drone footage. We'll rejoin them back onto the main route and then we'll continue on out and then there's this fantastic road. It's mainly uphill for a long while and then it drops down out here to point number four, which is Ross Rope here. And again, if the sun is shining, the, the view out along here is absolutely stunning. The water, the colour of the water is absolutely Beautiful, all this turquoise, blue and green colour. Um, really, really worth the effort to get down, as you can see. So then we'll come back up out of there. Again, as I said, that's a dead end. And we'll come back along the route and rejoin the main route here. Now, I've done a little backtrack here. We are going to continue on here, but we're going to take five minutes just to backtrack onto this lake because it's well worth doing. I couldn't get the road down to it because I really wanted to get up to these two points but it's worth when you're coming down here to back up onto it for a minute uh, and I'll just show you why if I just go to street view again so as you can see it's an absolutely stunning lake it's very similar uh, to Dulock up where we're going to eventually end up which is in near Lan Lanan there or Delphi uh, but a really really beautiful little lake and only takes you know five minutes to get in and out of there from off the main route so coming in off that lake, we'll continue on down. We'll follow this lake down until we get to the junction here. And here's where, depending on how much time you have, because uh, we're not far now from our final destination up here, point 30. So I'd highly recommend, because you're quite close to it and because it wasn't possible to, to, to include it in the existing coastal route, it's well worth backtracking a little bit here. It'll take only about 15 minutes or so. And getting down to point number 26, which is Kylemore Abbey. So I'll just click on here. Kylemore Abbey, again, it's just one of these iconic points that has to be to be seen. Let's just see if I can get a better point on it. So you can see it's a beautiful lake, but there's the abbey over there in the distance. I'll just see if I can get a better shot of it. 
there's the abbey in the distance and there's a little bus that runs up to these beautiful gardens up there and you can hike up to the to the top of this mountain that's behind it it's absolutely stunning so well worth the effort to get down they can you can do a tour inside it as well it's really well worth it it was a, it was a school for a long long while um i don't think it's used anymore but it's it's well worth the visit now you have a choice here depending on how much time you have uh, if you're tight for time and you just want to get on can continue back up to where we came and we'll continue on around here or you could cut down this road here down through Letterfrack down into recess sorry not Letterfrack uh, Inna down past the Inna Bay Hotel then into recess up to Mom Cross and then continue back up here to rejoin with Lanon these roads here are absolutely stunning um, but it was hard to include them with the coastal trip if you have time I highly recommend going down and adding them in uh, but for the purpose of this one we're going to cut back up here and go to point number 27 which is a lookout point uh, over Killary Harbour and as I mentioned I think Killary Harbour is one of the uh, the signature points uh, and this isn't a great point but there's several points that you'll come down along this road where you'll get much better view high up views looking out over Killary Harbour and it's absolutely stunning um, so from there we'll continue on into the coast we'll hit uh, come into Lenan beautiful little village here it's where a lot of the scenes from the movie the quiet man with John Wayne uh, what was filmed uh, and then you'll follow the coast road out uh, until you get up to here and this is where the border finishes for Galway so that's the border there for Galway so you'll be once you get to here you're leaving Galway and then you'll turn off and you're heading into Mayo now so point number 28 is just to turn off uh, into uh, in towards Delphi point number 29 then is Ashley Falls uh, again you can stop here but it's just a little bridge and it's looking up at, a, at a, a very large weir it's really beautiful now some stunning mountains around it and you'll continue on around Killary uh, Harbour you'll follow the road continue on down and this is an absolutely stunning drive all along Killary Harbour from from what I believe I think Killary Harbour is one of uh, is Ireland's only true uh, glacial ford, fjord um, I could be wrong on that but uh, from, from what I remember I believe it is but you continue on out the road and we're going to continue on up here it follows the river and then eventually you'll come to Delphi uh, Mountain Resort now this, this is where I normally stay there are other options in the area uh, but this is the one that I would recommend it's an absolutely stunning place uh, they do an awful lot of uh, outdoor activities like horse riding and uh, mountaineering, canoeing and stuff like that. So it's, a, it's an adventure centre as well as a, as a hotel. Um, but uh, I'm not getting a great picture of it there. Let me see if I can get another picture. For some reason it's not. Yeah, so there it is there. Uh, the rooms in it are absolutely stunning. And again, I'm not affiliated to it. They have a hostel and a hotel. Uh, so you can take your pick as to which one you want to stay in uh, but well worth the effort now what I would say is we'll be going into it in day two but before you go in for the night only five minutes up the road is Duloc uh, the absolutely stunning Duloc uh, lake uh, which is just this one up here and it's a stunning drive as I said we'll go into it in the in the next day but if, if you get up to here it's absolutely I'll just show it to you I always go up there when I'm staying in Delphi and I just have a look out before I go and check into the hotel for the evening but absolutely stunning so that is the end of uh, the first day that's the the commute over to Galway and then the first part of the uh, the trip of this section of the wild Atlantic way so with that now we'll go on and we'll have a look at day number two